Hello everyone. Praise the Lord. Um, praise His holy and great name. And uh, let us be thankful for His grace and for His um, love and gift of salvation. Thanks to Jesus that we have redemption through His blood and that we can be rest assured that when we believed when we put our trust in Lord Jesus Christ we were saved and we are saved and we will be saved forever and that we have been fetched out of the darkness and we have uh, been brought into the light and it's all because of Jesus nothing that we do and nothing we can say uh, can add to that because God has done everything for us so let us be thankful for that and people who don't know who Christ is and don't know his finished work and don't know um, how beautiful and how great is this gift uh, that God has given us uh, through Jesus Christ and the redemption of all our sins and um, you know just the um, relationship that we can have uh, with God um, through Christ so Jesus is the only way truth and life and I believe in it and I pray that anyone who doesn't know Christ um, may know who he is and um, may know that um, they can have salvation and it's available for all those who believe in his life death and resurrection and because of his resurrection we are saved so hallelujah and what a beautiful gift that is um, available to us all and God is coming soon Jesus Christ is coming soon and it appears from all the events that's been happening all around us um, points to Jesus second coming points to the rapture and um, we should not be scared but we should be um, we should be um, sharing the good news of Lord Jesus Christ uh, as much as we can. And may Lord help us and lead us to uh, share his word and uh, share uh, that the gift of salvation is available to all those who believe. And uh, everyone can be saved and can be rescued from the darkness and um, can have eternal life with Lord Jesus Christ in heaven with that um, like we've been continuing uh, we've been doing John uh, gospel of John from the New Testament and um, we have done uh, till chapter 3 and we will be continuing today with chapter 4 it's a, a little big chapter and has like 54 verses in it and uh, uh, like I tried to do it before I will read through this chapter and if there is anything that comes to um, my mind and if anything that uh, God helps me to uh, interpret and understand uh, I will uh, gladly share that here in this uh, video and I pray and I ask God to help us uh, as we have this fellowship Lord uh, help us to be able to uh, understand your word and to be able to um, uh, gather wisdom and knowledge from it and uh, may it glorify uh, his name and all that he has done for us um, so let's uh, get into chapter 4 and this is the version that I am reading is the KJV version uh, it's one of the original text you can say the original translation of the Hebrew and the um, um, 
you know Greek version um, of Bible so this is uh, said to be the true version and uh, it has all the verses and nothing has been deleted nothing has been uh, added and um, so we believe this to be a true word of God so let's get started chapter 4 <clears throat> When therefore the Lord knew how the Pharisees had heard that Jesus made and baptized more disciples than John, though Jesus himself baptized not but his disciples, he left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, uh, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus therefore being wearied uh, with his journey sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So back in the days, like um, Jews and uh, Samar uh, Samar uh, Samaritans uh, people, they didn't have uh, that kind of exchange between each other. And uh, it's said to be, I think... Uh, a uh, bit um, odd uh, because I think uh, the Jews uh, regarded, I might be wrong, but the Jews regarded uh, Samaritans or anyone uh, apart from them uh, to be low uh, uh, in status and uh, uh, low in class basically and um, uh, generally they would not ask to uh, you know to uh, have drink or food or anything from them so the Samaritan woman was a bit uh, uh, taken aback uh, by Jesus asking her of the water and that's why she said that uh, how is it that being a Jew you are asking uh, me for uh, water so, continuing with verse 10, Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knewest the gift of God, and who is it that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water, that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband, and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five, five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that said, saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jer Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. So what is happening here is that Jesus tells her that if she would have known who is asking for the water, she would have not asked in the first place. Um, and he said that um, the water that... Uh, she will give and the water that is there in the well um, uh, would make the person thirst again but the water uh, that uh, Jesus will give uh, would not make a person thirst again and would spring an everlasting life into them 
So Jesus is basically talking about uh, the gift that uh, uh, he has uh, to give uh, to those who believe in him and uh, uh, his uh, deity. Uh, so he's talking about that, uh, that he has the water and he has the uh, way for everlasting life. And, uh, uh, and having that, a person would not, you know, thrust, thirst again or hunger again. So he has everything that a person uh, soul needs and uh, he basically uh, feeds the soul. He basically uh, quench the thirst of the soul. Um, but the water that we have here uh, only uh, is temporary, but uh, this one is everlasting. So that's beautiful uh, what he said uh, here. And uh, uh, and 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 uh, when the woman uh, when the woman was asked uh, when Jesus asked woman that uh, you know uh, when she said that you know give me that water so that I don't have to come here again you know um, and then Jesus said that uh, you know go call thy husband go call your husband and come uh, here again and uh, to that uh, she responded that she has no husband and uh, jesus said that yes you're right you said it right uh, you had five husbands but now the one with whom you stay is not your husband <clears throat> and then um woman was perplexed woman was uh, uh, uh you know sh uh, shocked or surprised to hear that and she uh, definitely thought that uh, uh how would a person uh, know this uh, he must be a prophet he must uh, be from god and uh, yeah that's where we continue uh, so <clears throat> 21 verse jesus said unto her woman believe me the hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor at jerusalem worship the father ye worship ye know not what ye know what we worship for salvation is of the Jews. So here, basically, uh, when the Samaritan woman said, uh, knowing that uh, he's from uh, Jerusalem and that uh, he knows uh, about her uh, without even, um, you know, uh, knowing her, and when she said that he's a prophet, um, um, she said that uh, the Jerusalem uh, is the place where, uh, you know, uh, people worship. Uh, God and no God and to which uh, Jesus says that uh, you know the hour will come when um, you know uh, it wouldn't be a mountain or it wouldn't be a place where uh, God the Father would be worshipped but it would be um, you know um, uh, you can worship and uh, uh, you can worship him, him anywhere, uh, knowing that he is uh, with you. So that's what I draw from it, that um, Jesus is basically talking about that there is no uh, particular place uh, in today's day and age where you go and you can meet God when you pray, but it's wherever you pray um, and with the right heart and God would meet you there. So and uh, he talks about that that uh, you know the hour cometh and now is when the true worshiper shall worship the father in spirit and in truth and uh, father seeketh such to worship him so god is looking for people who worship him um with this with the right spirit and with the truth and uh uh, you know uh, those who will seek him with a, with that right spirit and heart uh, you uh, they will find God there uh, so beautiful um, God is a spirit and they that worship him must uh, worship him in spirit and truth yeah the woman saith unto him I know that Messiah cometh which is called Christ when he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speak unto thee am he. It's so clearly uh, written here in, in this uh, verse 26, where people uh, these days, like they counter you, they ask you where God said, where Jesus said that he's a God. But here, very specifically, when the woman said about the Messiah that is to come, and that he will, um, uh, he, when he will come, he will say and tell everything, all things. 
and here jesus answered saying that i that speak unto thee am he so here very very clearly jesus is telling us that he is god that he is the christ so yeah and upon this came his disciples and marveled that he talked with the woman yet no man said what seekest thou or why talkest thou with her the woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city and saith to the men come see a man which told me all things that ever i did is not is not this the christ then they went out of the city and came unto him in the meanwhile his disciples prayed him saying master eat but he said unto them i have meat to eat that ye know not of therefore said the disciples one to another hath any man brought him aught to eat jesus saith unto them my meat is to do the will of him that sent me and to finish his work say not ye there are yet 4 months and then cometh harvest Behold I say unto you lift up your eyes and look on the fields for they are white already to harvest and he that reapeth receiveth wages and gathereth fruit unto life eternal but that both he that soweth and he that reapeth may rejoice together and here is that saying true one soweth and another reapeth I sent you to reap that whereon ye bestowed no labor other men labored and ye are entered into their labors So God is uh, Jesus is actually talking about the um you know uh, the sowing and the reaping of uh, seeds and he's talking about the harvest and he is basically uh, talking about um people Uh, and uh, what he is sowing um, in the world for people to see and um, um, to receive, and how they flourish and uh, how they will be harvested. So it's basically kind of uh, in relation to um, Jesus uh, sowing and and disciples working uh, together um, to bring people to God and. Um, yeah <clears throat> so uh, that um you know it will be a rejoicing time uh, when uh, the harvest will be uh, there and when the <clears throat> wages of uh, uh, the hard work will be paid off and many of samaritans of that city believed on him for saying of the woman uh, which testified he told all men uh that ever i did when samaritans went into the uh, into her village and uh, told all all these people uh she came across that uh, uh, you know jesus told her about everything that she ever did in her life and uh, uh she told them that uh, he must be christ and people believed in that you know Uh, so when the samaritans were come unto him they besought him uh, that he would tarry with them and he abode there two days so all these people who believed samaritan woman they all came to jesus and um, uh, asked him to tarry with them to stay with him and uh, jesus stayed with them for two days uh, and many more believed because of his own word and then it was not just the samaritan woman's word but it was a uh, people who heard Christ's word who heard Jesus's word uh, and uh, then they believed so uh, here it's saying that uh, it was not just through belief of the samaritan but also there were many who believed uh, afterwards uh, because of uh, Jesus Christ's word that he shared with them and said unto the woman now we believe not because of thy saying for we have heard him ourselves and know that this is indeed the Christ the savior of the world now after two days he departed thence and went into galilee for jesus himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country then when he was uh, come into galilee the galileans received him having seen all the things that he did at jerusalem at the feast for they also went unto the feast so jesus came again into cana of galilee where he made the water wine and there was a certain noble man whose son was sick at capernaum 
When he heard that Jesus was come out of Judea into Galilee, he went unto him and besought him that he would come down and heal his son, for he was at the point of death. Then said Jesus unto him, Except ye see signs and wonders, ye will not believe. The nobleman saith unto him, Sir, come down, ere my child die. Jesus saith unto him, Go thy way, thy son liveth. And the man believed the word that Jesus had spoken unto him, and he went his way. And as he was now going down, his servants met him and told him, saying, Thy son liveth. They inquired, uh, then inquired he of them the hour when he began to amend. And they un said unto him, Yesterday at the seventh hour the fever left him. So the father knew that it was at the same hour in which Jesus said unto him, Thy son liveth, and himself believed, and his whole house. This is again the second miracle that Jesus did with, when, he was, when he was come out of Judea into Galilee. So this is the second miracle that he did in Galilee. Uh, first was the turning of water into wine and now this and and this is very beautifully uh, 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 is given here is that Jesus said that go thy way thy son liveth and it's not only that it's the noble man's belief he believed that uh, what Jesus has said is uh, will be done and, um, and that's why it's it's been stressed here uh, another time as well and when he inquired and he um, asked when his uh, when uh, when the child started to began to you know uh, amend and began to uh, be healed and uh, when he got to know that it was the same hour when uh, G uh, Jesus said that th thy son liveth and himself believed and he, when he believed then um, you know uh, he was uh, he lived uh, the son lived so this is really beautiful and we see that God has done everything for us and it's just so wonderful to think um, that how a sinner like us uh, who has broken all the laws and morals of God and yet God love, love us so much that he sent his son to die for our sin, to be a sacrifice for our sin and to shed his holy blood for us and because of that blood we can be cleansed and when we believe that his blood has redeemed us is that's when we receive the salvation and knowing that he rose again from the dead all that he said lives all that he uh, ever promised stands true today because our god is living um, god and he is alive and well and he rose from the dead and all his promises stands true so friends believe that god has done everything for us we just need to believe in him and his redemptive power know who we are what we have done how we have grieved god and uh, when we put our trust in his um, life death and resurrection is that's when we are given this beautiful and the greatest gift we can ever have in our lifetime on this earth is the gift of salvation and i pray that every person who doesn't know christ would know him and that lord will soften their heart and minds and would help them uh, to come as uh, as child uh, with innocence and uh, believe and uh, accept him with gladness and uh, rejoicing so with that we will finish this fourth chapter we finish this fourth chapter and I will see you again uh, in the fifth chapter soon God willing uh, till then God bless you all and may Lord take care of you 
Uh, may peace be with you all. Shalom.